TicWatch easily makes some of the best smartwatches on the market as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, you got Fossil and Samsung, you've got Fitbit and Apple, but never have I seen a company pack so many features into a smartwatch as Mavoid does, and to do it so elegantly. Ugh. Ugh. Look, I'm not a Mavoid fanboy. A few years ago, I was sent the very first Tick watch, and it was pretty generic. There was nothing about this thing that stood out, but not long after, they came out with the first generation Tick Watch Pro, and that thing astounded me. As of right now, this company makes the most powerful smartwatches. Spec-wise, these things are incredible, and I've talked about the TicWatch Pro 3 a couple months ago, so if you're curious, you can check out that video. Recently, Mavoy reached out to me and sent me the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra GPS, and asked me to do a comparison between their newest smartwatches. Since I have a lot of experience with their brand, it sounded like a perfect match. So let's check out the 3 Ultra and see if this is worth the jump in price from the Pro. First things first, we need to get this out of the way. Mavoy does a lot of things right, but there are two things that they don't, and I need to address them. Firstly, their lack of color options for these watches is a bit disappointing. Don't get me wrong, I love black. It's shiny, it's sleek, it goes with everything, and I would always pick black if I had the choice anyway. But having a gold option, silver, rose gold, maybe black with silver trims and so on, this would be really nice, and I have no idea why they don't do it. I asked Mavoy why they don't have more color options, and their answer was less than satisfying. The second thing I need to get out of the way is the names that they give these watches. The TicWatch Pro 3 is a fine title. The TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra GPS? It feels like I'm leveling up in Call of Duty. TicWatch Extreme Pro Delta Force Advanced. Why not just call it the TicWatch 3 Ultra? Those are small issues and they really don't matter so much, especially when you start using this thing. So let's dive into these specs real quick. Firstly, we have a very powerful Snapdragon 4100 dual-core processor, running at 2GHz, which is almost the same CPU as the one in the Pro 3, but we'll get into that later. You have a full gigabyte of RAM, 8 gigs of internal storage, a 1.4-inch dual-layer display, and if you're familiar with Mavoy watches, you already know about this technology. It's honestly my favorite part of their watch. One of their displays is an AMOLED screen, and the other is an FSTN display, which is a fancy way of saying LCD. The screen is also glassed over with a Corning Gorilla anti-fingerprint cover. I noticed with my TicWatch Pro 3, these watches are strong. You can hit these with a truck and they don't show a scratch, which I'm really impressed with. You have Bluetooth 5.0 on the Ultra, a 577 milliamp battery, which is one of the largest batteries we have on a smartwatch to date. These batteries are really nice. I actually drained my Pro 3 battery and didn't charge it for a week. When I plugged it in, it took maybe two hours until it was full, and these watches last around three days without charging. Then you have an IP68 water resistance rating, which makes sense being as it is a sport watch that will track your swimming, rafting, kayaking, and how long you take a shower, you dirty animal. Now when you compare the TicWatch Ultra to the Pro 3, you'll notice the designs are very similar. They still have the 4-pin charging connector on the same side, the sensors are all back there, the bands are the same 22mm standard and you can use basically any watch band you like. These smartwatches are the same size, the speakers are on the same side, the mic is also in the same spot. The only real difference is the finish on top. The Ultra is ribbed all around the watch and on the two watch buttons, which is a nice look I gotta say. Now, as for the processor, even though this is not a 4100 Plus, these CPUs are running at a much higher clock speed than normal. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 4100 Plus runs at 1.7 GHz, but the TicWatch 3 Ultra is running the Snapdragon 4100 at 2 GHz, so this company did some overclocking. Very nice. Now, that 2 GHz is only running when you have the watch in its regular mode, the always-on display. If you use it in its essential mode, it actually runs on the less powerful co-processor to save you some extra battery life. An essential mode on this watch is said to last from 45 to 50 days, while the AMOLED mode gives you 3 to 5 days of use. In my experience using the watch, I've gotten about 3 days. Now, I said that both of these watches have the Snapdragon 4100, and this is true, but the Ultra has a better 4100, because firstly, the Ultra is clocked at 2 GHz while the Pro is clocked at 1.7, and secondly, the Ultra has that co-processor that I was talking about, which is used to improve battery life, and the TicWatch Pro 3 has the standard quad-core 4100. In my test using both watches, I noticed the battery life is similar between the two, and the performance is basically the exact same. So don't worry too much if you have the Pro, and think you might have made the wrong choice here. The cool thing about the third generation of these Tick watches is you can download apps right off of the Play Store, meaning if you want to listen to music and go on a run, you don't have to bring your phone. You can download YouTube Music or Spotify right onto the watch, and connect it to your earbuds or headphones and just listen on that. 
no need to carry around your bulky phone and go on runs, and the watch will still track your workout information as you exercise. Speaking of that, there are a bunch of workout features and sensors on this thing. Basically any exercise you could ever do is in here, and this watch will track it. Not only that, but then you have mental health readers? They have a lot of useful sensors, don't get me wrong, but there are also a lot in here that I will never use. Both watches also work with Android and Apple phones, which is very nice, and I've seen quite a few reviews from Apple fans saying that they traded their Apple Watch for this because of all the features it offers. Now, there was one thing that the Ultra had that I was really excited for that the Pro did not. The TicWatch Ultra had a built-in compass, which is an exciting feature for me, but they removed it. You can't even download a compass on the Google Play Store. I asked Mobvoi why this feature was taken away, and they said it was for some internal reason, which wasn't a good enough answer for me, so I did some digging. The best result I found was people on XDA and Reddit saying that either Google asked them to remove it, or it was interfering with some other health sensor on the watch. I find it really annoying that they had this feature and removed it without letting the community know. There were some people who bought this watch because of the compass, and they would have much preferred that over those health sensors, but who knows, maybe this feature will come back with Wear OS 3. Speaking of that, yes, they will be updating both of these watches to Wear OS 3 sometime this year, but they aren't telling us when. The update is coming out though to all watches with the Snapdragon 4100, which means the TicWatch 3 Pro and Ultra, the TicWatch E3, the Fossil Gen 6, the Scoggin Foster Gen 6, Michael Kors Gen 6 Bradshaw, and the Razer X Fossil Gen 6 will all be getting Wear OS 3, and when they do, these watches are going to get even better than they are now. The one downside to these watches is how old Wear OS is, and the fact that this is getting updated is a very big win for Mobvoi. Now here's an important question that you probably want to answer. If I already have the TicWatch Pro 3, is there a reason for me to upgrade to the Ultra? Honestly, they're basically the exact same watch, just the Ultra has these ridges and a few neat software features that the Pro 3 doesn't have, and we can go into one of those for a second. See, on the TicWatch 3 Pro, you have a backlight in the Essential Mode, which is a really nice feature and I was very glad they added that. I didn't know how it could get any better, but in the Ultra, not only is the backlight brighter without sacrificing battery life, but you get to choose what color you want the backlight to be. There's a setting here in the Essential Mode Preferences where you can choose between 18 different color options and it's not necessary, but I'm not going to complain. This is just cool. Now I was curious about the differences between these watches, so I'll go through what the Ultra has that the Pro does not. The Ultra has Bluetooth 5.0 while the Pro has 4.2. The Ultra also has weight tracking, it tracks your water intake, there's a stroke recognition sensor on the Ultra that the Pro does not have. The Ultra will also warn you if your heartbeat is regular. It also supports QI wireless charging while the Pro has no ability to charge without the cable. You can Bluetooth the Ultra to your phone or even to your DSLR camera and control the camera from your watch to a degree. But the TicWatch Pro 3 does have an LTE version, so you can put a SIM card in it while they currently don't have an LTE version for the Ultra. So if you want your smartwatch to basically be your phone, you're going to want to go with the Pro. Now, we should talk about the Mavoy app for a second. This app is going to keep track of everything your watch is monitoring, so if you want a fuller report, you can come in here. You've got physical and mental health readouts, energy level, your activity and step counts, heart rate, SpO2, skin temp, stress, and you can even monitor the background noise around you and see if you're in an environment that might damage your ears. I've heard people say that this app doesn't have the most accurate information, especially in regards to sleep tracking, which is fine for me since I never wear my watches to bed. I also understand that this is a watch and it's trying to be an all-in-one Swiss Army thing, so it's not going to be perfect. For me, this watch is mostly here to look pretty and give you some basic information about steps, app notifications, and time. If you don't want to use the Mavoy app, you can also use Google's fitness apps instead, so the choice is yours. Alright, let's talk about some cons. There are some things that I don't like, and I always think that's worth sharing. The first one is bloatware. There are some apps on this watch that I will never use, and I understand that they're Mavoy apps, but it'd be nice if Mavoy had its own store, or even just put their apps on the Google Play Store and let you decide which ones you want. There's no reason for me to have a flashlight or that wash hands application. I don't care about Tick Zen and you have instances where you have repeat apps. Google's Fit Breathe is loaded on here and then you have Tick Breathe. You have Fit Heart Rate Monitor and Tick Pulse. Just let me pick which apps I want to use, but unfortunately you can't delete them, so you just gotta shove them down to the bottom of your app drawer and pretend they don't exist. It just makes this watch seem bloated when I have a bunch of stuff in here that I don't need. Not that these apps really affect anything, the Ultra and the Pro are the fastest smartwatches I've ever used. 
The only time they ran slow was when I first unboxed them. I loaded them up, connected my Google accounts, and after that, they're blazing fast and they stay fast. As for the sensors, neither of these watches have an ECG sensor or a blood pressure sensor, so if you're looking for a watch that can do that, you might want to get a Samsung. The next con is the fact that they got rid of the compass, but we already talked about that, so let's move on to Lefty. See, I wear my watch on my right wrist. I've always done this, even though I'm right-handed, and I've had digital watches that I wore and rotated the screen 180 degrees to make it easier on myself. Both of these watches do not have the ability to do that, so I downloaded Lefty on the Google Play Store and it worked. Kinda. See, Lefty did flip the AMOLED display, but the LCD display cannot be flipped, so there's no practical purpose for using this app. I don't even know if I would have kept Lefty on this watch. I just wanted to test it, but it kind of breaks the functionality of it, so screw that. Just wanted to let you know. Mavoy has made the best smartwatch I've ever seen. As far as I'm concerned, this is a winning company who provides the very most out of a smart wearable, and I for one am impressed with every revision. I think owning a smartwatch comes with its own pros and cons. On the one hand, you can tell time and check your incoming messages. On the other hand, you can't.